Greetings, horror fans. I'm Ghastly. I'm Gruesome. And tonight we got a special guest star. Gouge. Yeah, we had a friend over. Uh, he's staying for a couple of nights, and we figured uh, let's let's have him pop on the podcast. So now what... subscribe and like the video, or we'll kill ourselves and haunt you like a real horror movie. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. We're gonna we're gonna come for your souls in the night. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, we're gonna. It's funny that you reference that, because we're going to be watching The Simpsons tonight, The Treehouse of Horror, yeah. and one of my favorite gags from classic Simpsons is Krusty the Clown, he's like, kids, who do you love? Krusty, how much do you love me? With all our hearts. What'll you do if my show gets canceled? We'll kill ourselves. Oh, God. Yes. I oh love that God. gag, Pennywise and you just did the too. same thing. Uh, yeah, I guess there, you could draw a parallel between Krusty the Clown and Pennywise. Mm -hmm. um, they're both depressing clowns who shouldn't be allowed near children. Oh, no. They should not be allowed um, by children because uh, they are some no. dangerous but people. But we're gonna watch... I think there's a scary clown in one of them. We're gonna watch the first four Treehouse of Horrors. Um, from the first... What was it? Season 2, 3, and... Did it get to 4? 2, 3, and 4 of The Simpsons. Excellent. So it was back when they were still good. So the first four we're gonna watch, right? The yeah. first four Treehouse of Horrors. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then... Yeah, we're gonna comment after each episode, not after each segment, though. We're gonna we're gonna sort of like how we did with the Twilight Zone almost a year ago now. After each episode, we're gonna pause, pull up the commentary, talk about them. Uh, do we really need to do the lead in with the who's in this, who directed this? I mean, Dan Castellaneta, Nancy yeah. Cartwright is in this. Um, um, I mean, it was the early Simpsons, so they were good. Who is Nancy Cartwright? Is the voice of Bart, right? Yeah. Who is the voice of Lisa? I don't know. I don't ah, remember. Uh, is, is that a that's good Marge. representation? That's Marge. Oh, Marge. Oh, my God. Who's Lisa? The little girl? Yeah, Lisa's the little girl. A little girl. How old is she? Like, five? Is I she mean, five? she's in, like, the third grade, but none of the Simpsons really have ages. You're right. Simpsons kind of just, like, these, like... Because they've been um, on for 42 years you know, and they haven't aged. human. Well, they're, they are human. The reason they have the yellow skin is because, basically, the showrunner wanted them to stand out on cable. They figured that as you're flipping through the cable channels, holy crap, those people have bright yellow skin might stand out. And at the time, it really did, before everybody kind of started mimicking them. Although, unlike with Family Guy and South Park, where everyone not only rips off their humor, but their visual style, no one's ripped off The Simpsons. I think because it'd be harder to defend, yeah, why are your characters I mean, yellow? Seth MacFarlane yes, has really, really bit the style of Simpsons very early Yes, on. but he never stole their color, was my point. He didn't do the whole brightly colored people thing. He Fair did, enough. I think the only thing currently... I think it was, the, but it was the same kind of round, the round ca cartoony character With designs. the big eyes, and the, you're right. Yeah. It's Yeardley Smith is Lisa Simpson. <laughs> Yeardley Smith. And the reason I wanted to look it up is because she also does the voice of a character in a... Spielberg animated film We're Back a Dinosaur Story uh, which is notable for going from incredibly cutesy wacky time traveling dinosaurs to horrifying demonic circus master forcing the children to sign contracts in blood oh my oh. gosh what like, and it goes like? at the drop of a hat have you but noticed that most horror the... movies have children as like the base like children are just in horror movies they're terrifying well the reason kids are in horror movies are for two reasons if, if yeah. you're talking about kids as the protagonist it's because it's easier for the audience to sympathize and be scared with someone who has absolutely no power and if you're talking about creepy horror kids, like like in The Shining, creepy come horror play with kids. Us. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that's a subversion of of expectations. Something tiny and shot and childlike and cute murdering you is creepier than like an axe murderer doing it. So you expect the axe murderer. It's that innocence they have. Yeah. You know? Although one yeah. comedian did point this out. He like, why, why are why are kids in horror movies scary? Well, let me put it this way. Go home and ask you your like your five year old if you had a knife. Do you think you'd stab someone? And they're probably gonna go yes. Imagine that, but with power. Mm. Oh <laughs> That's gosh. why ghost kids yes. are scary. Those kids are so scary, too. And, like, the clowns uh, and, like, the... Clowns are great. The, just, like, the danger that those clowns pose to the children. The... the Pedophilic reference is exactly. what you're looking for. The the, the, I wasn't you were, sure you if I could say around that. No, you can say whatever you want. Pedophilic reference. These clowns. That is like a major theme. Well, too. John Wayne Gacy. And again, it was the subversion of expectations where kids are supposed to be happy around clowns and clowns are supposed to be harmless. 
but now they're being portrayed as scary to the point where it's actually impacting the livelihoods of legitimate birthday clowns because people oh. are now scared of them thanks to the movies yes, and stuff. You gotta, you gotta be careful with those clowns, dude. Even me. I mean, I never, like, I mean, as a child, I had a clown and he took me into the closet one time and... All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, I won't finish that story, but, you know, it, it, it didn't turn out that well, but um, now here I am today. I'm what a survivor. What the fuck is wrong with but, you? Yo, just relax, Aaron, okay? Just relax. Gouge likes to speak his mind. You know, Gouge speaks... Gouge should either no start filter. doing or stop doing his medication one or the other if you're on meds get off them if you're off gouge get on them on meds but you know gouge has to be very careful <laughs> with what he says you know on your I'm all right all right all right all right all right this has been fun okay before we get even further far afield so we're starting with the first treehouse of horror was in season two right yes uh we're gonna here pull up the pull up the thing let's see what it which one this is called season two episode it's just called treehouse, it's just of, called treehouse of horror all right i know they give each of them fun little names so i guess we'll just say which segments we're in afterwards so we'll see you after season two, episode three, the first ever Treehouse of Horror. And we're back from the first one. So that was Bad Dream House, Hungry and the Damned, and The Raven. So what, what did we think? I kind of like The Raven. I don't, I, I think Dan Castle, I, I think what I would have liked if Dan Castellaneta slowed down a bit, because like sometimes he was just... I think all the poetry, actually, he's running into it too fast. Well, they also cut, like, two-thirds of the poem. Of course, but, like... And replaced it with slapstick and such. I, I'm gonna disagree with you. I liked, because we've got James Earl Jones giving the slow, dramatic reading. The narration's cool, yeah. Was and then we Jones? cut... Yeah, it was. And Holy then we shit. cut to Dan Castellanata's fast-paced Homer, and I think it was funny. It goes from, you know... On the pallid bust of Pallas sitting o'er my chamber door. Surely, said I. And then it cuts to, to Homer Simpson, you know. Thou art no craven, oh. crude and half-shorn ravens from the night's Plutonian shore. I, I think it's funny. <laughs> I think I think the it's contrast is good. <laughs> um, Alright, so Bad Dream House was just a send-up of every haunted house movie ever. Right. It just was. The walls bleed, <laughs> the house shows <laughs> kill each other. I like, I like the portal. Stop throwing your trash in our dimension. I like the, the ancient Indian burial ground that not only had Crazy Horse and uh, Not So Crazy Horse, but it also had Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, yes. <laughs> that was good. Um... Hungry or the Damned was just, it was just, um, to serve man from Twilight Zone, except it turns out the aliens weren't gonna cook people. Yeah, and the, and That's one of the, the best Simpsons gags. were the bad guys. You know, uh, it turns out, instead of to serve man being a cookbook, it's the cookbook is named How to Cook Humans, except it turns out there was dust on the cover and it's How to Cook for Humans. That but was wait, actually there's more my dust. favorite one, The Hungry how to and cook, the Damned. Yeah, How to Cook 40 Humans. Nope, there's still more dust. Oh. How to Cook for 40 Humans. <laughs> Oh why were you making God. us eat? Make you eat? We gave you food and you made Bigsy a And that was such a nice twist to it, you know? Because I was really, funny. they were salivating the entire time, these aliens, these green aliens with these deep voices. Like, you yeah, do, and the, do, the, do the deep the, voice. um, my name is Kang, yes. and this is my friend, Kodos. And what's your name? To pronounce it correctly, I would have to rip out your tongue. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, and that, that was twist around. Holy and they've crap. got, yeah, and they're always drooling, and it turns out they're just drooling because, like, they're aliens, and aliens drool. That's just their thing, you know? That's just what they do. <laughs> exactly. That's just what they do, you know? Uh, so that one was fun. Um, I think what I liked the most about the... I mean, the Raven was the best of the three, yeah. in my opinion. I think what I liked the best about it was the animation, right up until it turns into pure slapstick, is very atmospheric, and they've got all the low angles and the deep purple shadows and the long firelight things. It really does look as creepy and gothic as it can get while still being recognizably The Simpsons. Right. I mean, James Earl Jones does a great job. He doesn't get to read the whole poem. No one's ever going to top Sir Christopher Lee's reading of The Raven, obviously. Right. Um, remind me, after this is all done, though, to show you the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song, because they use this weird voc order thing and just do the poem as a song. It's a great album. Anyway, uh, so that was that was the first one. Oh, here's fun, something fun. Uh, Bad Dream House was directed by Wes Archer. Hungry or the Damned was directed by Rich Moore. And The Raven was directed by David Silverman. So they're each directed by different people. Yeah, that's why they've got the different tones to yeah, them. Yeah, they really did have Although different apparently in episodes, apparently in episode, uh, the next one, you know, the second um, Treehouse of Horror, 
that one, all of them had the same director. So up next, we've got Lisa's Nightmare, Bart's Nightmare, and Homer's Nightmare. Are so any, I have no idea what these are going to be parodies of. Are any of our dockets on the night for directed by Brad Bird? Uh, let's see. Because like, let's he, see. Well, hang on. Treehouse of Horror. Treehouse of Horror Two was directed by Jim Reardon. Uh, Everything in Treehouse of Horror Three was directed by Carlos Beza, and Everything in Treehouse of Horror Four was directed by David Silverman. So no, no Brad Bird. Interesting. Uh, if you don't know, Brad Bird is uh, director of um, Incredibles, Incredibles Two, and a bunch of other. Actually, I'm looking through the list. I don't think Brad Bird has ever directed a Treehouse of Horror. Sim- uh, yeah, but he's a longtime Simpsons director. That's why I was asking. Yeah, but he's not been involved in any of the Treehouse of Horrors. Fair enough. Um, not even as a as a writer. So yeah, they. I guess it makes sense. They went with different people for the the spooky ones. But yeah, up next from season three, we have installment two of Treehouse of Horror. Uh, let's Watch get to the it. Nightmares. We'll be right with you. All right, we're back again. So that was Treehouse of Horror 2. The three nightmares. Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. Lisa's, Bart's, and, and Homer's nightmares. So the gag was that they all pig out on Halloween candy, and Marge's like, you'll get nightmares, and then they all get nightmares. But specifically, Lisa's nightmare was a parody of the monkey's paw. Bart's <laughs> nightmare was it's a good life from the Twilight Zone, complete with a Rod Serling sound alike. Yeah. And then Homer's nightmare was very loosely Frankenstein. Specifically, he gets a job as a grave digger. Mr. Burns needs a corpse to put a brain in a robot. He mistakes Homer for a corpse and puts his brain in a robot. And then it ends with Homer and and, and with Homer having uh, <laughs> having Mr. Bit Burns in the middle is, of his dream. Uh, he wakes up from the dream and then it turns out it wasn't a dream. You know they do the or was it thing because yeah. Mr. Burns' head is grafted onto Homer's body. Oh my gosh! And Bart freaking bit him. Like that, that was, was good. That was, he wakes was... up screaming because everyone wakes up screaming from their nightmares and then Homer wakes up screaming and Marge goes, did you have a nightmare? No, Bart bit me. And he's like, hey man, you were hogging the blankets, man. Mm-hmm. I did like, um, he's... with the monkey's paw, the way they did the gag about the little shop that wasn't there anymore. Yeah. It's like, I got it from that shop over there. And, and there's just a whirlwind. Oh wait, no, I was wrong. It's over there. And he points a little further to the left and the shop keeps there. Hello. Ooh. <laughs> it didn't disappear. Um, It's a Good Life was funny because it starts out basically as just, you know, there's the rotten, spoiled little kid, but he's got the powers of God, so everyone tells him he's good. Except in the original Twilight Zone, he kills a dude by turning him into a jack-o'-lantern with his own head. And not a jack-o'-lantern, a jack-in-the-box. But when he does it to Homer, then they switch to a subplot of Homer learning to love his child and just bouncing around as a Homer in the box. Yeah, like he goes to a child psychologist and they're like, you need to... Um, t- to care need- for the boy, give yeah. him positive attention. Yeah, right. And then, of course, the best gag in that short is he finally gives his dad his body back, and the dad hugs him and he goes, "I love you, boy. I love you, dad." And that's what makes Bart wake up screaming was him having a dream about hugging his dad and telling him he loved him. <laughs> no, but those were good, and they all had the same director, which you could tell because they didn't have the dramatic shifts in atmosphere like the first episode. Right, uh, it was more did. serialized in the first season, in yeah. the second season, I think. Exactly. Oh, uh, well, technically, yeah, this was the third season because they only started doing these season two. Yeah, they didn't start calling them Treehouse of Horror until season until the second one. The first one was just the Simpsons Halloween special. Uh. Um, all right, so now we're on to season three, which was the yeah. Nope, yeah, season two was the... Oh, Lord. So we're on to season four? We were on season three just now. Now we're on to season four, and it will be installment three. This is going to drive me crazy. Right. Um, it's, it's Treehouse of Horror 3 ah! from season four. I got you, Peter. We got Clown Without Pity, King Homer, and Dial Z for Zombies. I love it. And they are all directed by Carlos Beza. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's get into it. Directed by Carlos Mencia. Stop it. <laughs> See ya. Oh shit. All right, we're back. So okay, so the parodies this time. <laughs> what were they? So the last one was just zombie movies. It was just zombie movies in general. You know, reference the middle Pet one Cemetery. was the Living Doll. Yeah, the Living Doll from um. No, the first one was the Living Doll. Oh really? Okay. The middle one was King Kong. Oh, it was right, King right, Homer, right. Homer Simpson, and King, King Kong. Kong, and the Living Doll from Twilight Zone. Yeah, which had a clever little bit. Which uh, two two clever things about that. He wasn't subtle in the Living Doll from the Twilight Zone. The doll tells him he's gonna kill him, and then he slowly goes crazier and crazier until he trips and dies. Yeah. With leaving it ambiguous, was the doll real? 
until the wife sees it and then it talks to her. Yeah. But in this, the doll goes, I'm gonna kill you. Oh yeah, with what? And it fucking pulls out a butcher's knife and lunges at him. And then it turns out it was evil because someone had set the doll to the evil oh, setting. Yeah. Instead yes. of good. Evil it tried to like, what was it called? Uh, harpoon him, right? Yeah. He was it tried to harpoon him in the bathtub. Like. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention about the previous one, number two. Yeah. Uh, in the Monkey's Paw episode, they wish for the Simpsons to be rich and famous. And then everyone knows the Simpsons. And then we get all these comments about, I used to think the Simpsons were fun, but now all the merchandising and the constant exposure, I don't think they're funny anymore. Were they ever really? It's just too much. We're seeing the Simpsons too much. It's, it's in the third anymore. season. It's, and it's in the third season that they made this joke. And now that they're going on... 40-something? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah, in the 40s, it just... It's oddly prophetic, isn't it? Depressingly yeah. so. The King Kong one was... I didn't like the King Kong one as you much. Didn't. Yeah, I, maybe just because I'm not a fan, really, of the franchise of King Kong. That's fair. Yeah. What didn't you care for about it? I, I just didn't do it for you. Yeah, I just I don't I don't really like the story of King Kong. I like I, my favorite part about that is that he's too fat to get up very tall. Oh, he tries to climb the building. Um, he tries to climb the Empire State Building. He literally makes it two stories. Gets tired, falls over. And he's fat and lazy, you know? So, like, that's what... What I did appreciate, moment. though, because I am a fan of the King Kong stuff, is several of the shots... If you notice that in a few of them, the animation looked like it was moving slower than it should have, they were literally shot-for-shot shot recreating iconic shots from the black and white stop-motion King Kong. Right. Which, that was pretty cool. That was a cool thing. Also, the fact that they get married. Right. Which, when did this come out? When did this come out? Uh, let me check. The 90s. 92. Yeah. Now, when did Peter Jackson's King Kong come out? 2005? Okay, well, it was just because people pointed out in King in, in oh, wait, Peter Jackson's King Kong, he really played up the ape kind of falling in love with the human woman, and the human woman kind of falling in love with the ape. Yeah. And in this, they just straight get married, and like, so who's referencing who? It's 2005, I was right. So oh, they weren't referencing Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson just saw this and said, yeah, let's do that, but play it seriously. <coughs> A good um, set of episodes. It was yeah, it was fun. Um, the zombies one was fun. Come on, we all laughed oh, our yeah. asses off when. Wait, you know, hi, diddly ho, neighbor. Can I chew on your brains? And he shoots him in the face. Dad, you killed the zombie Flanders. He was a zombie. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that was great. Or the sequence of, of Homer gunning down zombie. Washington, zombie, Einstein, zombie, I like, Shakespeare. I like all the little comments of the zombies saying uh, saying things to each other when they're going back into their graves. See you in hell, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Still rolling that boulder? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, I'm John Smith. John Smith, 1882. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> no, it was fun. I remember commenting when Bart goes into the occult section of the library. Right. And we, he opens a book and there's the screaming faces, which again, a, late, a movie made years later, uh, Harry Potter also did screamy faces in a book in the occult section. But <laughs> I was like, hey, it's the return of atmospheric Treehouse of Horror because it had the long, dark shadows and the low angle shots and such. Right. I like it when they do that. Uh, it's classic. Okay, so we got one more of these things. This has been a fun one. Not, not one of our more serious episodes, but it's fun, and it's good to just... Horror do comedy's great. Right. <laughs> especially, especially classic Simpsons. So up next, we've got Treehouse of Horror number four from season five. Oh, and there's uh, there's four of them this time. Um, Wraparounds, The Devil and Homer Simpson, Terror at Five and a Half Feet, and Bart Simpson's Dracula. Does that mean they're all shorter? Uh, I think wraparounds might be... Oh, okay. I think wraparounds is probably like a, an opening and closing uh, thing, like how Twilight Zone had the lead-in. Right, right, right. So it's probably an introduction thing. Um, here's what I'm going to say. This, though, uh, Bart Simpson's Dracula, I know what that is specifically. It's going to be not just Dracula, but it's going to be the Bram Stoker's Dracula movie with Gary Oldman, which right. is one of my favorite gothic horror movies ever made. Devil and Homer Simpson, probably Devil and Daniel Webster. Terror at five and a half feet is just Nightmare at 20,000 feet, which we've watched two versions of it. Right. I'm going to put my money on this. The Simpsons version is going to be better than the 2019 version. It's going to be, be the best one. Well, I, nothing's going to top nothing's going to top the classic Shatner one, but I think it's going to be better than the... Oh, we've watched three versions of this so far, haven't we? We watched the Shatner version from the original show. We watched the... the movie version. And with then we John Lithgow, and then we watched the 2019 version. 2019 version was awful. Lithgow was fun, and um, Shatner was obviously iconic. I can't wait to see what Simpsons does with it. Five and a half feet gonna be a car or something let's all right go let's go for it 
Oakley Doakley do, we're back. I had yes, to. We I had back. to because it was it was Simpsons. All right, well, Fl- all right, Fred Flanders. <laughs> it's Ned Flanders. Yeah, but you're his cousin, Fred Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I can go with that. I can go with that. Um, maybe it's like Freddy Krueger, but as Ned Flanders. I mean, Ned Flanders was the devil in one of these. So we had we had. The Devil and Homer Simpson, which was a straight-up parody of The Devil and Daniel Webster. We had Terror at Five and a Half Feet, which was Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. And we had Bart Simpson's Dracula, which started as a parody of Bram Stoker's Dracula, but then halfway through it turned into um, Salem's Lot by Stephen right. King, with the ghost children floating at the window. Yeah. Join us, Lisa. And the wraparound was Night Gallery. Right. It was it, the which intro was the and the exit was Night Gallery. Which was fun. Oh. It was fun. Yes, those were like they were actually really interesting, and I like how well the two of those um, episodes flowed into each other. You know, mm-hmm. no, the Night Gallery is a good thing. The Tiny Toons uh, referenced the Night Gallery too during their right. Halloween special. Which, if we had more time, I'd say we should do that at some point. We might have to watch it on our own time at some point. Cause Night it's Gallery, really funny. Tiny Toons Halloween special. Oh. Uh, Night Gallery is also good. Not gonna lie. Uh, Rod Serling even came in for a few episodes of that. Yeah, I know. As the host, but um. What did we think? What did we think? Anything to say about these? I mean, I kind of like that uh, Marge is the head vampire. Out the of end. nowhere, at the end of the vampire one, they're like, we killed Burns, there's no vampires anymore. No, we're all vampires, Lisa. It <laughs> they turns all out turn into vampires. I like that Bart gets really committed <laughs> even though he's right. <laughs> oh, at the end of, that was cool, because they love making fun of the school system, because the American school system is awful. Terrible. But they, the public school system in this country is a nightmare. But yeah, Bart... Not only does he save the bus from the gremlin, at the end they see that the bus was completely torn apart by a gremlin and he's like, see, I was right. Yes, but even so, your outburst was disruptive. Maybe a few months in the insane asylum will teach you a lesson and he gets shipped off to New Bedlam. And then at the end it goes, it follows him into the, into the ambulance and he sees the gremlin again and starts screaming and that was a reference to the remake of Nightmare 20,000 Feet for the Twilight Zone movie with John Lithgow. Right. Only he doesn't see a gremlin in that. He... The, dr- the bus driver goes, you think that was scary? Check a load of this. He turns into the monster from the beginning, puts on, let the midnight special. Yeah. And that's, so that was fun. What was the first one? Devil and Daniel Webster. I mean, you know, the lawyer who can beat the devil. Yeah. Except in this uh, case, it was Lionel Hutz. And he bails instantly because he's an idiot. And the yeah. best part of that was, they sent Homer to hell and Homer is forced to eat donuts. But that's like Homer's thing. Like, well, right, because they're, ir- you know? they're going for ironic punishment. You know, force feed him donuts until he explodes, except he just enjoys it. The That's machine- what Hank Hill does with when Bobby starts smoking. He's like, all right, smoke this whole, all these packs. Well, the conveyor belt with the machine on the nose that opens your mouth and forces you to eat was actually a shout out to a classic black and white Looney Tunes cartoon, Pigs is Pigs, where a gluttonous little pig modeled off of Porky, but a different character. Right. Is constantly being told if he keeps eating, he's going to end up in a sticky end, and he has a nightmare where he's kidnapped by a mad scientist who forces him to eat with a machine like that until he explodes, oh literally. Then he wakes up and the kid's like, oh my god, I'll never do it again! And then his mom calls him for breakfast, and he runs downstairs and starts shoveling the food oh, in his mouth. Yes! Yes, I actually remember seeing that. I yeah. love that one so much. Uh, that's good. So yeah, these were fun. It's... I mean, okay, everyone says this, but it really is sobering to go back and see how funny and how good... And how much soul there was in classic Simpsons. There's, uh, there's a breakneck pace to the early Simpsons. Now that, which... now that it's just a shambling zombie of Flash animation and celebrity cameos. It's just, it's it's really quicker than I remember it being. It was, well, cause it was well made. And because they were hand drawing the animation, they could, they could cheat things to make it work faster and make it fun. Uh, I think my favorite gag was when Bart's running from the vampires on the stairwell and he sees the lever that turns the stairs into a slide and he goes, I really shouldn't, but when will I be here again? And then instantly realizes he's going to be eaten by vampires. Right. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. They stopped doing the, um... For the first two episodes, they have the, the curtain speech with Marge saying the we're going to be three scary. Episodes, and then the, the third one, speech. it's Homer. And then in this one, it's not a, a curtain speech anymore. They just go straight to the graveyard. Then it cuts to Bart in the night gallery. And then Marge comes out and is like, you should really warn them or they're going to complain. Yeah. Ah, uh, good times. And in the graveyard, there was the grave of subtle political satire. And this was the late 90s? Yes. Or maybe the even the 90s. early 90s. So, almost 30 years ago, they were already making fun of on cable TV that political s- satire is dead. And we still have it. I'm sad now. 
who knows if it's funny anymore, but, like... It's not subtle. That was their point. I'm sad now. All right. Uh, but, no, these were fun. This was a fun thing. Um, yeah, go... What do you think? I really enjoyed this. This being my first time here. Um, yeah. This is the first time I was watching these kind of spooky Simpsons. Wait, you've never watched The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror before? I have not watched that before, and I really, I like them so much. It's, like, unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen, and honestly, it flowed together very nicely. I like the voice actors. I like the very... Well, okay, that... Dan Castellanata is awesome. Who's the deep voice of that alien? Like Oh, uh, Kodo, and he's also the voice of Principal Skinner. Let me look that up. I actually don't know the name. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, Honestly, well, thank fun. you guys so much for having me on this yeah. podcast. It know? was kind of fun to notice when they would use voices like... Kodo the alien is Principal Skinner. Oh, and yeah. And the demon who's force-feeding Homer Simpson the donuts is Mo from Mo's Tavern. Because in most, Tavern. most of these yes. shows, it's really it's a the small same cast. cast. Yeah. Same voice actor. Um, kind of like South Park, Principal you know? Skinner voice. And it is... Um... At the time this one came out, it was Harry Shearer. It's currently Martin Sheen. Oh. But it was originally Harry Shearer. It's Martin Sheen? Currently. Martin weird. Sheen's a good actor. That's weird, though. It is weird, but he's a good actor. He's the guy everyone forgets is the main character in Apocalypse Now. Oh, my God. Because he's overshadowed by Marlon Brando right. and, and the, the character Colonel Kilgore, who I forget who plays him. But yeah, no, these were fun, and I'm glad we were able to get you into Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. That's... yeah. Getting people into this kind of stuff is kind of my goal in life, you know. Dude, I mess with this really hard, you know. It's not like it's not like too scary, you know. Cause well, I'm no, not, it's I, the Simpsons. But it's, it's like comedic, a little bit scary. You don't know what's gonna happen next. Something must have happened with the with the the practices and standards because in the first Treehouse of Horror, Bart reacts to a haunted house by going, "A haunted house, bitchin'," and then in epi- in the fourth one, they have home. They have Mr. Burns. Be like, sir, your button, your finger I mean, don't sure, need to when, and he goes, oh, son of a, and then it when, cuts off. When Bart came out, they thought Bart was the worst thing in American television. I know, he was so controversial, which is <laughs> hilarious in hindsight. It's That comment they make in the first Treehouse of Horror, I guess it's like when you go back and watch the first uh, Friday the 13th, it's kind of tame by today's standards. I guess uh, it's like when you go back and watch the early Simpsons, it's kind of tame by today's standards. Yes, very tame. And yet, in both instances, despite being tamer, it's still better than 90% of what's being put out today because it actually had artistic soul. Mm. I mean, Friday the 13th Part 1 doesn't hold up as a film, in my opinion, but there's a lot of really good ideas in it. It's more of a case of I don't like the film, but I admire what it did. Does that make sense? Right. Um, Whereas in the case of this, I both like and admire early Simpsons. Um, so yeah, I think that's about everything we have to say. I did like that the aliens keep showing up. Yeah, the aliens. Yeah. They just, they just come back for every one of them. Pop up, you know? Yep. Talking about how they're going to destroy the world, even though in the first one the twist was that they weren't going to destroy the world. Yeah, they were nice. <laughs> this is a <laughs> And then they just detail. became evil. Did they, were they salivating each episode they showed up? Yes. Yeah, they were so drooling. Just they just, it's just their thing. They always I have see. the, the yeah. waving tentacles, yeah. the big fangs, the drooling, the weird space helmets. Um... I think that was it. Yeah, that's pretty much everything we have to say. This was a lot of fun. And next week, it's going to be Halloween, and we're going to be watching Trick or Treat. Yeah. So, we'll see you guys then. I have been Ghastly. I've been Gruesome. And this has been our friend. Yow. Yeah, that's Nice to meet you guys. So, yeah, uh, stay spooky, y'all. Ooh.